This episode is brought to you by Strength Portal. You need a single software platform that enables your trainers to deliver consistent high quality workouts, track client progress and scale your business. The problem is you're still using pen and paper or basic spreadsheets to run your business, which leads to poor client experiences, inaccurate tracking, and prevents you from growing your business, making you feel frustrated. Strength Portal understand your challenge and have worked closely with the hit industry to create a software platform to manage and scale your niche business. You can integrate with MindBody, manage a standardized exercise and workout library for your team, track workouts effectively, and produce client reports at the click of a button. Strength Portal is used by multiple businesses in the high intensity strength training community, namely Discover Strength, Smart Strength Austin, Medex Precision Fitness, and more. Starting with Strength Portal is super simple. Number one, sign up for the best package for your business. Number two, let Strength Portal take the load off and help onboard your business onto the platform. And number three, start delivering consistent workout experiences and scale your business to the next level. To help support the podcast, please go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business and sign up now so you can stop feeling frustrated about your business and start to scale your business to its true potential. Go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business. All right, Lawrence Snell here and welcome back to High Intensity Business, the podcast where we discuss high intensity strength training and provide you with the tools, the tactics and the strategies to help you grow your strength training business. This is episode 377 and today we are going to be learning all about a relatively new strength training studio called TNT Strength Studio based in Oakland. Uh, California. We're going to learn about all their their journey in terms of how they've been getting on with starting and growing the business, which has not been, I guess, only in operation since April 2021. So with that said, today's guests are Liam Bauer and Jesse Schmidt, who are the co-owners of TNT Strength in Oakland, California. The TNT Strength Studio has been in operation since April 2021 and currently features free strength coaches serving 65 clients with hit influence exercise protocols. Liam and Jesse met in 2017 at a big box gym, uh, or sorry, a box gym in Oakland, and subsequently began co producing the Truth Not Trends podcast, which is still in production. And I highly recommend you guys are great podcasters, great communicators. Jesse was drawn to Liam's deep knowledge of exercise science that Liam had achieved over 34 years of experience in the industry. Liam appreciated Jesse's drive to learn as much as possible about the art and science of strength training. TNT's strengths mission is to promote health and prevent disease through evidence-based strength training. Their current clients range in ages from 16 to 84, the majority of them being over 50. They are passionate about the life-changing and performance-enhancing effects of strength training and look forward to expanding their circle of influence to help even more people in the future. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Great to see you both again. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Lawrence. You're welcome. It's great to be with you, and uh, let's let the learning commence. I am very excited to to hear how you guys. Let the games begin. Let the games begin. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I don't talk to many new studio owners and hear them accumulate sixty five clients within the space of basically one year, um, and that's very impressive. And I'm I'm really excited to just I guess kick this one off with with some questions around that. But before I do. How are you guys feeling having gone off on your own with the studio? I know before you were working out of, a, as I said there in the intro, a box where you met and you were kind of work, you were taking a cut, I assume, on sessions and working for a studio. Um, or, or were you sort of self-employed? Like, what was that dynamic like? And how do you feel about this transition you've made? And well, sorry, so, I'll, start with, I'll start with you, Jesse, and then and yeah. after, yeah. So, I mean, we, COVID actually, played to our advantage a little bit um we had been planning our departure from the box gym as the lockdowns uh you know were put in place in oakland and so that really i mean it was it was uncomfortable but that really forced us to pivot to we pivoted all our clients you know virtual or at least all the ones who were willing to train virtually which eventually was most of them and um and just through that process, you know, we went we went bargain shopping for a you know for a, for equipment and for a you know studio space 
during COVID. And it just, it, those things really, um, really worked out for us. So um, you could say we were, we were already self-employed by the time the mm. studio opened. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it actually was a, it, it was, it was not a, a certain transition for us, but it, it, it worked. And um, Liam, how did you, how did you feel about the transition? You know, um, having been doing this for such a long time and, and uh, you know, most, you know, 99% of it, I've been working for someone else. Uh, you know, I've been, but it's been something I've been thinking about for many, many years. I think you probably know Tom Grace, who, you know, from Black Iron Strength. He's an old friend of mine. Um, he, you know, over the years, I've had several moments where I've almost pulled the trigger on opening my own space all alone, uh, you know, and for one reason or another, it hasn't, hasn't worked out. And um, has some other, you know, sort of life stuff that gets in the way, as we all do. But uh, it's always been something I've been wanting to do. So, you know, it, they tell you, you know, it takes what, like 20 years to become an overnight success, you know. So it, <laughs> it, it took me a while uh, to finally get there. You know, Jesse is, you know, a voracious student of anything he's passionate about. Um, you know, as we as we discussed, you know, he listens to books at five times speed and gets four of them in his head at one time. But um <laughs> He's, you know, he's, 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 uh, you know, he, he is just incredibly driven and passionate and, you know, so I'm, it's really because of him, you know, that it's all happening. I'm just lucky, you know, that, it, you know, I don't know that's it's kismet or serendipity or whatever, you know, that, you know, he was ready to absorb the stuff that I wanted to give away. And, and then his enthusiasm and passion for driving it forward, um, you know, carried me along to finally take those steps that I've always wanted to take. So, you know, it's, um, mm -hmm been a great uh team experience. yeah i think that's i think that's been a key for us um i, I just think that like l you know liam and i complement each other's well um liam with his experience and he's just such a, a creative thinker he's he's really uh i think more of the visionary in our business and and he just his judgment is so good because he's he's had right all these different you know experiences to see to know what works and what doesn't or what or what could potentially work really well and then i think as he's saying you know i'm i'm driven to actually and we talk about this on a weekly basis to actually like execute things and put them into play and you know and and see what works and see what doesn't and get rid of that fast you know if we need to wow so he's visionary your integrator basically <laughs> yeah that's 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 what i was going for yeah, you complement each other really well, and that's EOS speak for anyone who's interested. Um, EOS from the book Traction. Um, yeah, it, it makes sense, right? Liam, you have so much experience, so much expertise, um, which I think is actually a big reason why you've been able to grow fast. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and it just makes sense to have someone like you by his side, Jesse, who can just execute and get things done and has, you know, great sales, business skills, communication skills from what I've seen anyway, so far. Um, so let's just talk about, you know, how you guys got started. So you went bargain shopping, Jesse, you mentioned that. How did you tell me about, cause I, I, I have lots of listeners who are always interested in leasing a space, figuring out the best way to do that, trying to find the best equipment, what equipment they should start with. So let's start there. So how did you start with you, Jesse, on this? Cause you mentioned it. How did you go about finding the space and equipment. Okay, so as far as the equipment goes, again, that was another you know area where Liam's experience was invaluable. Um, we, you know, Liam actually found our equipment on eBay, <laughs> um, and, and and so we got we got a line of of like sixteen pieces of Nautilus Nitro equipment um, for about twenty grand. And, you know, that, so it was just, and it was in great shape. And not only that, but it came from a reseller. They're on the East coast, we're on the West coast, but they were able to just hold on to it indefinitely until we were able to, you know, uh, to receive it in our studio space. So, I mean, that was honestly, that was an incredible stroke of luck. I, I don't know if, you know, COVID played into that, if they were willing to hold on to it for longer, but I mean, they didn't charge us anything for that. So, I mean, we probably saved at least five grand on just not having to store it in a facility uh, while we were waiting for it. And we got a great deal on, on it in the first place. So, so that was that Liam knew what to look for. You know, we, we knew in our studio, we wanted to have, 
you know, all the major movements, you know, um, and so we got, we got those and more. Um, and then with the studios, the studio space was, was, yeah, that's, that's a long story. That's too long of a story. So I'll give you the abridged version, but <laughs> I'll, suffice it to say that, you know, we, we eventually signed a lease at the sixth location. We negotiated a lease at the first one we had, had fallen through right before the lockdowns started in Oakland. And so we were actually hunting for places all through the pandemic. Not that we necessarily would have signed a lease, but we were, we were looking. Um, and the tricky thing about, you know, Oakland is a kind of a, an emerging market where, um, there is a lot of, there's a lot of wealth flowing into the community and there are a lot of large, um, uh, property management companies and and corporate uh, real estate owners and so many of those uh, leases we were negotiating with you know property management companies they were not favorable terms and it, and again uh, it was it was Liam who found the studio space that we're in now and uh, it's luckily not owned by one of those major property management companies it's a it's a single landlord who we have a great relationship with. And, um, and not only that, but there, there's a legacy in our space, um, you know, it was, uh, in the nineties owned by, uh, by Jack Dellinger, who I'll, I'll let, I'll let Liam take over and talk about that. Cause he actually got to go there yeah. and hang with the guy. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's the space is incredible. And, and as Jesse mentioned, um, you know, uh, I don't know if you want me to go all the way back to equipment stuff, but you know, I, I was yeah. searching for all those things during the pandemic. Um, we had a, we had a wish list, if you will. Right. We knew pieces that we really wanted. Um, one of which was a pullover. A uh, funny story was, you know, I had been hunting for equipment. I found a line. Um, I, I talked to the guy about it. I, I, we, I wasn't able to pull the trigger. I came back and he goes, Oh, another guy just bought it. And he, and I go, Oh, who is it? And he's like, I don't know. He's in Minnesota. And I was like, that guy, Luke Carlson <laughs> stole my equipment. And sure. And sure enough, it was Luke who had bought it for another studio that he was opening just before I could get my hands on it. So I kept teasing him. I said, you stole all my stuff. <laughs> so we found another line, but it didn't have a pullover. We got a pullover eventually. Um, I also, we wanted a MedX low back that was always on the wish list. And um, luckily, I, I, we're very good friends with Owen Dockham, who, who you know, out here with Live Oak Strength. And um, Owen had had an extra one in storage. And he gave me a super good deal on it. And I actually put a down payment on it you know, a year before we even had the studio, I just knew we were going to want it. So I just said, here, here's money, hold it for me. And um, when we finally had the space, another sort of uh, sort of lucky break was all through the pandemic. Um, he had some other stuff in storage that he didn't want to store any longer. And he basically told me, um, if you, if you want to, if you want to like settle up with the storage guy, you can just take those other pieces. So we actually ended up getting a MedX low back a Medex pec deck and the old Medex stretch machine all for one set small price. Uh, so those were great compliments as well. As far as the space goes, yeah, Jesse was mentioning um, back in the nineties, uh, Jack Dellinger, who was a bodybuilder in the forties and fifties, people may or may not know his name. If they're, if they're, um, you know, real, real hardcore fans of the iron game, then they know who he was. He's the only bodybuilder to ever defeat Bill Pearl. Uh, as one of his amazing accomplishments, but he was a local guy from Oakland and he had had this little gym, which turned into a, a fitness store for, you know, years and years. And in the nineties, uh, I lived not too far away and I realized he was in the neighborhood and I, I started going there all the time and hanging out with him. And, uh, he had a reputation for not being a very friendly guy at that time, but, but, uh, I was very polite and respectful and he, we became friends and he would, you know, tell me all the stories of the old days. He actually would, he built some custom equipment for me in the back of his shop, you know, uh, just amazing. And, and I would just go over there and just hang out. And it's one of my regrets in life, unfortunately, uh, that uh, I wanted to do some interviews with him way back when, because I used to uh, do a lot of writing. And I thought, you know, this guy, we, he needs to get, you know, some attention. It's been a while. And he ended up passing away. Um, and I didn't ever got a chance to do it. And uh, so, you know, I, I regret that. But anyway, this space belonged to him. So we actually have a picture of him right near the entrance on the wall, kind of uh, as a legacy That's space. Nice. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the woman who owns it, our landlord, 
she, when she acquired the space, she always wanted it to be a fitness space. So it's in entire history, it's been fitness in one form or another. It's been another personal training studio. It's been yoga and Pilates. It's been all kinds of things, but it's always been fitness based and she wanted it to stay that way. And that was part of what helped us get in the door. And as Jesse mentioned, we had a lot of problems, not just with the corporate um, property management companies, but with the city of Oakland itself, uh, getting permits and things are the way things are zoned, what types of businesses. And because this was a legacy space, um, they fast-tracked our, our, our ability to uh, to get in as a fitness business. They, got, they had actually reject some previous bids we put in for other spaces, and that was actually lucky for us, I think. Wow. That's a great story. And what, how did you initially make contact with the landlord then? You know, uh, we, we I, I actually knew the previous tenants as well. Like the, it was another personal training studio, and I was good friends with the, with the previous owners. Um, cause again, you know, I've been in the business so long and we, you know, you just know everybody. So, uh, I actually used to do some work for them. Uh, they, they had some contracts outside of their space. They, they actually had a corporate contract with Pixar, which they probably still have. And, uh, they used to get me, I was on the substitution list, which was cool. I used to go down to Pixar every now and then and, and do some training. But, uh, anyway, um, I actually know the woman as well. Like I, I, I used, I was training at a country club that's not nearby, not too far away. And, and uh, her brother was a member there. You know, it's just a weird bunch of little connections. Mm. And uh, when, when I saw the space I, and I, you know, I knew what it had been previously. I, I it would just be, immediately went to the top of my list. And um, so I, we just kept on, it wasn't for me, it was always like the top choice, but we had already put our foot in the door in a few other sp- spots and, as I say, so for me, I'm glad that those other ones didn't work out because this space is awesome. Yeah. yeah, it looks great. And I think what we'll do is probably embed your little um, st- studio tour, which you have on your homepage on your website. We'll put it on the blog post today so people can can see the studio and get a little tour and get a little bit more of your personalities in there as well. <laughs> um, so, so that's awesome. Thanks for that. And um, in terms of you, you were talking there about the pieces about you know getting the the lower back, which I totally agree with you is a great strategy to yeah we are definitely going to have that is no doubt in my mind i don't care what filters you have for getting machines that's one you got to have right um what can you talk to us about the logic behind the other pieces as well liam and um you know why you decided to to get those we definitely wanted also a, a four-way neck machine um mm-hmm. you know neck training is like a huge uh part of you know what i've been doing you know i, I spent a lot of time in my career working with athletes at high levels uh, neck training has always been super important to me. Uh, in 99.99% of, you know, big box gyms, there's not a, there's no four-way neck machines. There's no neck equipment of any kind. Um, so I've often done manual resistance or use the old school harnesses, you know, or some found a way to do it. Um, in the previous gym that Jesse and I met at, um, they would ask us meeting the trainers, you know, probably at least once a year, they would say, Hey, what kind of equipment should we get? And I, I wrote like a multi-page plea for a four-way neck machine, which went um, ignored uh, over and over again. So yeah, that was also very high on our list. And again, I, I tracked down a super great one for a great price. Um, it's an old Nautilus one. The, 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 everything about it is fantastic. It's funny because it's the oldest piece in our collection, but, it, but everyone thinks it's new because it just looks fantastic. It works so smooth. Um, so that was, that was very high on the list. And the pullover was also, um, high on the list. Um, we wanted to, you know, the, the sort of the original Nautilus, uh, sort of piece, right. That, that will work the lats in isolation to a degree. Um, another piece that you don't find these days, um, surprisingly in most modern gyms, you don't find pullovers. I mean, you don't find good equipment in most modern gyms. Um, people don't know the difference, obviously, um, you know. What's the difference between, you know, like even at our, our box gym, there was two leg extend, extension machines literally sitting right next to each other. And one was made by Techno Gym and it, it's, it's you know, was okay. And one was made by Body Masters and it was a piece of junk. <laughs> I mean, it was, it had the worst mechanics to it. It had the Strength worst curves, terrible. Yeah, every, every, everything about it was terrible. And they're right next to each other. And, you know, for anyone else, they, you know, they just take whichever one's available. Like, what's the difference, right? You sit there, you kick your feet forward. You know, they're the exact same thing, aren't they? You know, and it's like that, right? Most gyms just 
fill themselves up. I always, we, we use the car analogy a lot. They fit, most gyms f- populate their floor with crappy Chevys, right? And we want like Rolls Royces in our gym. So, uh, you know, they're, they both have four wheels and a steering wheel, but when you drive it, you immediately know, wow, this, this Rolls Royce definitely feels a lot better. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that's what we wanted, you know, and, and we, we, obviously we, unfortunately we couldn't afford, or, or it's not easy to track down like classic Nautilus, as you know, I'm sure better than most. Um, it's super hard to get your hands on. So we were lucky enough to get a kind of nitro line which is you know kind of in the middle of the you know nautilus has been bought and sold many times over the years uh, but that company the one that owned it when they came out with the nitro line they they were actually doing a pretty good job they're also the same company that uh, created the nautilus one line mm-hmm. um it's now so owned owned by yet another company star trek and uh, they're doing a horrible job of stewardship with nautilus they don't know what they're sitting on they literally are just slapping the Nautilus badge on other pieces of crap equipment that they have. Are you talking um, about like the instinct line and the, oh, all I kinds remember of the stuff. name? It, it's, cause I had a look at terrible. those cause I was, cause, cause they're obviously easy to get, you know, um, versus the nitro in some cases and all the Evo is it, was it the same? I forget. Evo and, I just, and nitro are the same company that, that had that, that, but, but th- these guys now they're totally different. Yeah. There's instinct and something else. And I, I posted inside hit business membership asking for some feedback and they were like, avoid, 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 <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's so junk. Yeah. It's, it's really not terrible. cheap either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I, we, Jesse were, and I were at Ursa in 2019 and I, I talked to the guy extensively from Nautilus who was the rep and, uh, he actually seemed intrigued in talking to me because of my experience. He's like, Oh, I, I need to like have some meetings with you. And when there's, you know, we, there's all kinds of things we could talk. And I was like, I'm happy to help. And then of course they ignored me completely. And, and uh, I think they're even putting Nautilus name on like Olympic lifting floors and stuff like that. Like things completely counter to the whole concept, you know, uh, they have no idea. It's just a name to them. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what other pieces did you get exactly? We have, um, you know, all, most of the classic pieces, uh, vertical chest, uh, compound row, pull down overhead press, lateral raise, uh, biceps, triceps. Uh, we have the rotary torso, abdominal, abduction, adduction, leg press. Uh, is that all Nautilus bar the lower back? All, all, all nitro. Yeah, everything is okay. nitro except for the except for the pec deck, which is medex, yeah. and the low, low back, which is medex. Everything else is nitro. Yeah, and you've got also a functional trainer as well with the cables, I think, haven't you? Um, no, not at the moment, oh. but we are just okay. about to uh, add something new. Um, we uh, we just ordered another piece, which has got a little bit of everything. It's a cool. It's a cool piece. It's more like one of these all in one power racks. It has multiple cable stacks it has a okay. has a smith machine it has a the ability to do free weight stuff it has a, a landmine attachment it doesn't it, so it's going to round out our game we use a we use resistance bands a lot um mm. we're, we're big fans of the harambe system which is a amazing harist, resistance band system that's we've partnered with um yeah. the, the the creator uh, we talk about them on our podcast a lot it's a, it's a great piece we use it a lot we um can you spell a, that because i'll put that in the show notes yeah, H A R A M B E. Okay, cool. It's it's like a Swahili word that means like working together or something like that. Uh, coming together as a team. I don't know, but uh, it's love an it. awesome piece. We love it. Um, we have we have because it was a dedicated space. The space already came with like an anchor point for TRX. We have that uh, anchor. We have an- band anchor points. We also have all kinds of old old school stuff because again, as you mentioned in the in the opening we consider ourselves to be hit influenced, right? Um, we, we have sandbags, we have kettlebells, we have dumbbells. Um, we have a little bit of everything. Um, so we, you know, we, we try to use everything that we use safely and efficiently and effectively, but, um, we inject all kinds of toys into the, into our program. Awesome. Jesse, um, um, I'd like to ask you about how you guys got started with, I guess, acquiring customers. So you open the doors or maybe even, Maybe you had a pre-launch, but talk to me about how you went about getting your first sort of 20 customers and how you grew from there. Yeah. Well, so the funny thing is we we haven't even had any sort of grand opening anything. Um, you Overrated. know, there's no banner. <laughs> we, had a, we, had, we did have a sign on the window when we first opened uh, that, you know, that said coming soon. And um, 
but just because of COVID, you know, we haven't had any, you know, large gatherings and we, we haven't like created a lot of hubbub. It's got to be interesting for the neighborhood to, to look at our space because, you know, we, we largely train one person at a time. And because of COVID, we've tried to stagger our clients. So multiple people are not training simultaneously. You know, it's just kind of one person every 30 minutes or so. So it just, it must look like, you know, there's, there's hardly anything going on in our studio, but we're, you know, growing consistently. Um, we did, so we had an existing client base of, yeah, probably, we probably had those 20 clients when we, when we first opened the studio. So that, you know, if you can, uh, you know, if you can have some revenue when you start up and you're not just coming from ground zero, that's definitely, that's definitely going to be helpful. Um, the fact that we are um, in a legacy fitness space has also been helpful um, mm-hmm. because people in the neighborhood recognize us as a gym space. They don't know what we are necessarily, and they. Um, but we do occasionally. I mean, actually, just yesterday we had walk in. We booked her for a baseline strength test, which is our you know free initial consultation, and. Um, and yeah, she, I mean, she just lives a couple blocks away and she, her son's been telling her to stop by. She's, you know, a woman who's in her fifties or sixties. And, and so she stopped in. So, um, so yeah, we benefited from, from, uh, the fitness space. We've also, um, and the credit to you, Lawrence, because we, you know, we had talked back in, I don't even know, maybe it was 2020. I think it was 2020 about, uh, the value of BNI and, uh, network marketing. And um, so Liam and I were both members of uh, BNI chapters in, uh, we joined in 2020. Um, Liam uh, is no longer a member of his chapter. Um, I still am a member of my chapter, um, but we ran the numbers um, a couple months ago. I don't know if, that, I don't know if these are current, but at that time we had, uh, we had accrued about 20 or 30% of our revenue from net on an ongoing basis from that network marketing from BN from BNI. And I'm also a member of the Oakland Rotary Club. Um, Rotary is another one of both BNI and Rotary are international networking organizations. Uh, Rotary focuses on service. Um, so they do a lot of, they do local and international service projects Um all kinds of different things around, you know, uh, curing diseases and clean drinking water and all kinds of stuff, you name it. Um, but essentially, you know, both BNI and Rotary are organizations where, you know, you have high, you tend to have high earning, you know, busy professional people, which we all know that that falls right, you know, square in the demo for most high intensity business uh, owners. So, I mean, that was a, that was a calculated thing on my part. I've been an Oakland Rotarian for over three years. So it was before the pandemic started, um, because I knew we were going to, we were down the roads at some point so going to open that studio. So <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and, and on top of that, um, you know, it's, it's a great organization that does, uh, really great things. And so, yeah, I mean, just outside of the, you know, the kind of ancillary networks, uh, benefits that come from networking, I would, I would recommend the Rotary Club to, when you, when you say the Rotary Club, it sounds like, you know, a lot of old men, um, which there definitely are. Um, I'm, I turned 35 next month and, uh, and I'm, I am probably about half the age of, uh, of most of the members in our, in our, um, chapter, but more importantly to me is, is the type of people that I'm around when I'm in that organization, which is, leaders um, and people who are really genuinely concerned about the well-being of the community, which as a business owner, we are, right? You have to be. Um, if you just look at it as a way to make money, um, I just think you're you're really only scratching the surface of what a business can be potentially. And if you're genuinely concerned about the well-being of, the, of your members that are, that are coming in there and the health of your community, um, you can do amazing things. Let's let me dive into that for a moment then. I love that perspective. So can you elaborate on how that perspective that you have beyond you know, just just money trying to bring value to the community, how does that manifest in what you do at TNT and what your plans are? Oh, sure. Are? 
Well, yeah. I'll say just kind of from an abstract standpoint, you know, you read uh, Jim Collins, for example, right? You read Built to Last, Good to Great, um, and you learn that, you know, uh, these, you know, some of the greatest companies in American history, you know, they're, they, you know, and most profitable, right? Their, their number one core value or their number one, you know, mission, you know, bullet point is not to just make tons of money, right? It's to serve their clients and serve their customers and serve their employees. And, and the being, you know, very profitable is, is, is almost a byproduct of, you know, you can think of it as bringing value to the marketplace. You can, I, I just think about it as, you know, enhancing people's lives. Um, but I think that when, and this is going to sound a, maybe a little, little woo woo for people, but I think, I think when you come from, from that perspective, of um you know not just trying to make lots of money but trying to serve people you you just you just kind of move through the world differently and so when how that kind of applies when you come into these uh you know networking spaces like at bni or rotary is that these people are highly attuned to networking and interpersonal dynamics okay they've a million times before they've seen people come into their space and try to try to pitch them try to close them uh you know and they're good at what they do right they these people know they're they're, they're experienced sales people they know how it's you know they know when it's done badly they know when people are going for a quick sale and then get out because you know if you've been a part of a bni chapter before people come and go right you generally have a core group that sticks around and you know those people are serious and they're in it for the long haul and they really do deeply genuinely support each other at least in my chapter and then you have people who, you know, they join because it's COVID or they join because it's the down season or they join because of whatever they're, they, you know, they just got to boost their sales and you know, they're not going to be around for a while and people don't trust those people. So that's the thing is, you know, you have to be in it for the long haul um, to, to really build trust. And when you are able to build trust and bring value to people's lives, you know, there's going to be a reciprocity there, at least in, uh, it's not a guarantee, but it's, it, that has been our experience and yeah. uh, has been my experience in both of these groups. It's been my experience I mean, too. Yeah. Go we ahead. Have built, we have it built into our core values, right? Like many of these, these tenants are built right into the core values of TNT strength. And, you know, you know, we have things like exceed people's expectations, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, things like that. We, we want to like over deliver, right. It's not, it's not just like make people strong, you know, uh, Mm. Yeah, you know, we 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 want we want to build lasting relationships, right? These things are like built into what we're doing. And um we want, you know, to all those things to be true. And, and it's, you know, when we get that that feedback from our clients um sort of organically, you know, then we know we're doing the right thing because it happens all the time, you know, like we, we, when they come back and go, "Whoa, this is way more than <laughs> I was expecting." You know, I I wrote I wrote an email to somebody recently even and I and I I said, "Did you get my email?" and he goes, he goes, your email was like so thoughtful and detailed. Like I, I had to take a while to like process it so I could give you a real, a good answer. Like I didn't want to like, just go, thanks. Got it. Right. He, he, he wanted to try to put as much thought into what he got as what, you know, as I was like, okay, well take your time. You know? <laughs> but we, you know, we, we get those kind of responses a lot and um, it's not because we're, you know, fishing. It's just, we're doing what we believe in. Yeah. It, it's uh, reminds me of what, uh, when, when asked, how to build a successful company, uh, Warren Buffett said, delight your customer. Just focus yeah. on delighting your customer. That's yeah, it. I, I, I believe that more than anything. Mm. Um, side side uh, question, because I do want to get more into the, the growth side of things. L let me see if I've got this assumption right. And I'm curious how you guys have dealt with this. Um, and this is, I guess, kind of for you, Liam. Knowing Jesse, as much as I do know him, he would probably be a little bit more systems orientated as it relates to the business, right? Customer joins the, 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 the business, you know, they get an email that onboards them, they go for a process, there's a workout process. However, you strike me as being incredibly knowledgeable, but a little bit less systems orientated and perhaps winging it a little bit more because you can kind of get away with it. I'm curious, does it ever create friction between you? And if so, how do you reconcile that? And I think I've hit something here because I can see Jesse's face. <laughs> and I'm just really curious. Uh, yeah, take it from there. So um, the hit whisperer. Yeah. What's that? Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I would say I would say that a, a lot of what you just said is is pretty accurate. Although, um, 
in truth, anything that's training related, you know, nutrition related, uh, designing, implementing, uh, you know, updating programming, right. Anything like that. I am extremely detail oriented mm. and I, I'm like been building and, and rebuilding and like creating stuff like that for all my career. And, um, so, I mean, most of the stuff that we do when it comes to the nuts and bolts of application, uh, comes from me as far as the training side. Um, but Jesse and I have collaborated, of course, continuously a great deal about it, but you're absolutely right. As far as like the systems and making them run and, you know, keeping the oil, uh, in, in all the right places to make it flow, uh, smoothly. Mm. That's definitely one of his many strong points. I mean, you know, as I said, I, I, I told him just, just a few days ago, um, you know, I can't, can't do it without him, you know, uh, like it never would have happened. Right. You know, he, he's the things that he's great at. He's the best. And, uh, I mean, he's also an incredible trainer. Don't get me wrong. He's incredible with the clients and, and has an amazing rapport and, and, and people love him. But, uh, as far as the behind the scenes stuff, I mean, he's constantly working. He's an overachiever. Um, he, he, there's no downtime. I mean, he's just like always, always working. And, um, Prob- probably my my um my biggest mistake is is appearing to take that for granted which i don't but um it's not at all not at all but, doesn't but, come uh, across that way no but i mean sometimes maybe for him because he's like working <laughs> so hard all the time um so i'm going to take this moment to make sure i re- reassure him that i, I don't take <laughs> thanks it for granted. man um but yeah so he you're right on the money about that stuff and i do think it's true that i probably wing it on some of those other things but when it comes to the application part um, I'm like literally my I'm constantly tinkering with that stuff. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. This episode is brought to you by Strength Portal. You need a software platform that enables you to track workouts, deliver consistent high quality client experiences, and scale your business. The problem is you're still using pen and paper or basic spreadsheets to run your business, which leads to inconsistent workout experiences and stifles your business growth, making you feel frustrated. Strength Pool to have worked closely with the hit industry to create a software platform to manage and scale your niche business. Strength Portal is used by multiple businesses in the high intensity strength training community, namely Discover Strength, Smart Strength Austin, Medex Precision Fitness, and more. To help support the podcast, go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business and sign up for your ideal package now. That's strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business. And now back to the episode. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, because I can imagine that being a frustration because it's like that just doesn't scale, right? If you're being that detail oriented of one person, I can imagine Jesse saying, Look, I know what you're doing here, Liam, but we just need to template it a little bit more. I get, that's what I can see happening, but I don't know if that actually happens. Um, but yeah, sorry, uh, Jesse, what's what's your perspective on, on this la- question? Last quick thing is, yeah, go I mean, really, really, it's been, um, and, and, and we definitely bump heads about stuff and we, and, uh, you know, we have over the years, um, like any relationship, right. Of any kind, but, mm-hmm. but it's also been a real collaboration when it comes to what we do, how we do it on the day to day basis. We, we literally sit down. I mean, we've been, we've been having meetings every week since before, you know, during the pandemic, we would meet on zoom and discuss and create business strategies and all that stuff every week. And we still do that every single week. We have a, we have business meeting uh, with the team, but Jesse and I, you know, sat down and literally figured this stuff out together and and we're constantly going, let's do this. Let's do that. He, he has an idea. Uh, I, I add something to it. Uh, you know, I refine it. He refines something that I inject, you know, it's just a, a collaboration. It's been awesome. awesome. Cool. Yeah. I, I, Thank you, Liam, for saying that stuff. Um, I think that I, I totally agree with with what Liam has been saying. And um, Lawrence, you've made a, a very perceptive uh, observation <laughs> there about our about our dynamic. Um, I'm good at creating awkward podcasts. <laughs> yeah. um, Liam, Liam's a mad scientist, you know, and it, and it's so funny because me with my brain, you know, I, I start to I start to cook up ideas about you know a new system we need to put in place. Um, you know, that's just the next brick we need to lay in, in building the foundation of our business. And I'll bring it up to Liam and he'll say, oh, yeah, yeah I already have that. 
I already have that written up, saved in my files. Uh, that happens literally all the time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, from, from little things to big things, I mean, you know, when we, so one thing, uh, we should mention is we we partnered with a, a really great software platform called exercise.com and we mm. highly recommend them to people in the hit space um, because they're just a great crm um, in terms of saving uh and liam found these guys too again credit to him um you know they they uh you can you can track your clients exercises weights time under tension reps all of it in the cloud you can uh you can um have that uh, workout data um, visually uh, organized into a graph so that you can show your clients the progress that they're making. You can handle your scheduling, your automated notifications, your payments, you, all of this, all of this stuff. Um, you can, and why I bring that up is because another thing you can do is uh, automate things like waivers and check-ins. So. What we hit one of the systems that we've set up in our business, which I think has been very helpful, it's not perfect, but it's helpful, is when let's say someone walks in. I'll use this woman with a woman a couple of days ago as a, as an example. A uh, woman walks in off or yesterday actually, she walks in off the street and she says, "You know, I'm, I'm interested." And you know, we give her we give her the the overview of what TNT does, and um, and you know, I say, "Well, you know, uh, if you give us your, you know, your name and email and phone number, we can we can put you into our system and and schedule your baseline strength test." As soon as we got that information from her, she immediately gets our par queue and waiver. So, and she's able to complete that digitally and return that to us, so that by, when she comes in um, for her baseline, we already know all the relevant, you know, medical stuff and things about her goals, and she's already signed the waiver. And people don't always do that. They've, you know, it's probably about 50% of the time, but still, you know, that, that can save you, you know, 15 or 20 minutes uh, in that initial session. And I think it's a great rapport building thing because when a person comes in and you say, you know, Hey, how's your, how's your shoulder feeling today? You know, cause they had whatever, you know, they had a rotor cuff surgery, you know, three months ago. Um, I think that plays really well. We also ask people um, I know this is, this is a, uh, goes against what a lot of people in the hit community do, but we, we like to uh, have our clients play their favorite music during their workout. So we ask in our, uh, in our like intake waiver, you know, what's your favorite kind of music. And so when they walk in for their baseline, we have that music playing. And um, so it just creates a, a great experience. So um, we also, so yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I, I think it's a cool thing that we, we do that little uh, because um, people really enjoy it. And, uh, it's been great for our own, uh, you know, musical uh, expanding our horizons, right? Because we have clients that listen to, you know, country and and, and, and like yeah. death metal and and Bach, you know. Uh, so all day long we're hearing different things, but it's it's kind of fun when someone comes in for the first time and they fill that spot out. You know, I like country music, and then when they walk in the door, that country music's already playing. And they, they don't really even realize it at first. And they're like, hey, wait a minute. This is it's like, like tailoring the experience like. to them, isn't it? It's, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Very authentic with your brand as well. Very fun orientated, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, that's I, definitely, I that's you know, we did. Touch. We did a, a podcast interview with the uh, with Brian and Peter Collins, who are over there in the in the UK, and uh, and we talked with them about that a lot. You know, that was one of the the central topics of that interview is that you know, high intensity training is hard work. You know, and and we're trying to we're trying to get you know we're trying to persuade people to do it for a lifetime you know which i mean that's a that's a lot of hard work you know mm -hmm. and if you're not having any fun uh you know i just don't think you're as likely to stick with it you know um there's got to be a good balance there and and yeah it's something like i mean it's just such a small touch to just have some music playing that you know people like um yeah. i think well. the, yeah i hear what you're saying i think it's uh it's one of those sacred cows, isn't it? In high intensity training that there shouldn't, it should be a quiet environment. Um, and exercise shouldn't be fun. You know, it's the famous Arthur Jones saying, if it's fun, you're doing it wrong. Right. Yeah. Well, and there although, is always, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to interrupt Lawrence. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say that I think that the, the, the sort of clinical stuff comes from the super slow community, right? Not from Arthur Jones. Yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the, good the, distinction. Hard, the hard work yeah. part definitely comes from him. You know, like if you don't, if you like it, the chances are you're doing it wrong, you know, yes. throw up from doing a set of curls. That's definitely Arthur Jones, but the, you know, the, 
no mirrors, you know, no nothing, you know, wear a tie. That all comes from Ken Got Hutchins it. and the super slow people. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for, yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, but you know, I, I, when you look at a lot of the research and a lot of the resistance training protocols that deliver health benefits, they're like nowhere near as efficient and as surgically precise as what the majority of yep. us lot do. Right. So it's like, do you think playing music is really going to impact the results <laughs> all that much? That's how I think about it. Well, if you look and, at the research, and I mean, I've like, seen, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but I, I mean, I, I've okay. seen people citing research that shows that music actually improves performance, you know? So, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure it's a very individual thing. Yeah. yeah. We, and we do have clients that don't want to hear it, which is fine. I'll, I'll, I mean, we have clients okay. that don't, we, they like don't, the silence. Yeah. Turn off the music. Yeah, yeah, or they we, want to just also, listen to the metronome. Yeah, we also put a metronome on, and some of them like really love dialing into that, you know, that Got keeping it. them on the 60 second beat, right? And they'll yep. say, Can you turn off the music and turn the metronome on, please? You know, and we'll be like, Absolutely, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Whatever, I think whatever, like a, whatever they want. Yeah. I think yeah. that I think that really speaks to, you know, like we like to think of, we call ourselves strength coaches, right? But we are, you know, strength coach, personal trainer, those, those uh, you know, labels are interchangeable. And, and that really speaks to the the personal side of our business, right? Like you can't a hundred percent, you know, templatize, you know, your training protocols, right. But whether it's because of, you know, a certain client has injuries and can't do a certain exercise or can't do a certain, you know, series of exercises, you know, some people like music, some people don't. I mean, you really, you really do have to know your clients deeply and, and, you know, deliver on the, uh, deliver on that consistently. Um, I think that's, I think that's a big reason why we've, you know, kind of come in full circle. I think that's why we've been able to grow, um, consistently is that, you know, people, people, um, they are acutely aware that we, that we do care about their experience and, and we are able to take their, you know, suggestions and criticisms and concerns and, and, turn that into, you know, real changes and that, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, stuff coming from our clients or whether it's, you know, the, the personality, uh, differences between Liam and myself, we sort of use that tension to drive us forward. And I think that that's really key in any business. Um, you just have to look, you, you know, you, you don't, you don't judge the information that's coming in. You just accept it. You know, we, t- we sometimes, uh, we use the Bruce Lee quote, you know, um, absorb what's useful, discard what's not, add what's uniquely your own, you know, and and just stay focused on just driving forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whether you identify it yourselves as as it or as this or not, you're both very good salespeople. And what I mean by that is, I was listening to one of your podcasts in preparation for this, and just listening to Liam, who might seem like the less of of in terms of like the business systems head at the, at the two of you. But when you, Liam, when I listen to you talk about meeting a client where they are and understanding their needs and not being dogmatic and not saying, no, you shouldn't do functional training. You should do it this way. Like it's just very clear to me, like, yeah, these guys are going to win people over straight away as soon as they open the doors. Right. And, and obviously that's what, what happened. Um, so no, that's quite clear to me. Just bringing it back to talking about tactics, I made a little list here. And let me see if I've got this right. So really, you basically um, grew the business fast in the beginning through a combination of four things. Uh, Walk-ins slash referrals, existing clients. In fact, existing clients should come first, right? So that helps. You've got a base of clients who you could transition over. Uh, And then networking. BNI and Oakland Rotary Club. Those are the yeah, things. Yeah, and we, Go ahead. we should add we should add a fifth thing, which is that we have a referral program, uh, it, just evergreen. So when any of our existing clients refers us someone they know who becomes a client, um, they get a seventy five dollar uh, uh, credit toward their account. So and, I mean they can do that an infinite number of times. Um, we I would say. I mean, I would have, I would have to go back and look, but we have a good chunk of clients who have referred us someone. Um, and a lot of, you know, people have their neighbor or their spouse coming in and training or their, or their son or daughter. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, or their parent. you know, sometimes it's a lot of that. Perhaps it'd be hard for you to know this, but how many, and I'm not telling you to withdraw that program, but how many of those referrals would have come anyway, without the incentive, just because you deliver great service. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Right. Um, I mean, the way we look at it, you know, we uh, 
any any referral is the, is the icing on the cake uh, for us. So uh, if it makes them happy, and we and we I'll say we also have another a small bonus. If somebody refers someone to us that they know who does not become a client, like they come and do their baseline strength test, but they don't sign up. Uh, we give them a five dollar uh, Starbucks card um, because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that was it. That was a BNI suggestion, actually, um, just because you know we want to encourage people to to speak well of us, you know, and and incentivize them to to recommend people. Yeah, I, yeah. I think on it. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say I think you're probably right, Lawrence. I, I'm where I feel in my. Heart I'm just jealous because I've tried a campaign like that and it's not driven any referrals, but we've had referrals yeah. organically. <laughs> I'm just jealous. Also, <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. But I, I mean, I kind of agree with you that I think it, that probably those referrals are going to happen either way, um, mm. because I do believe that they, you know, genuinely feel uh, that it's a good idea for them and the person they're referring. But I think it it has been a bonus for them because the, the we, you know I jokingly tell them sometimes I go hey you know if you're if you're good at this you could be training for free right like keep referring you know because uh, because every time you do it you get another credit right so so you know in theory if you're if you're giving enough referrals you could just be training free all the time mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah but I, but uh, I mean definitely I think those were going to happen uh, for yeah. the most part yeah. you I. I will say one of the first things, you know, we were talking about was, you know, like leaving the box gym setting and becoming, becoming a business owner. I mean, you have to think it's a paradigm shift. You have to think totally differently as a business owner and you have to be prepared for that as a business owner. I think it's a small business owner. I think it's really important to be, to be iterating and figuring out, you know, we talk about, uh, I know Luke likes to use the term rifle shots, right? You know, you take these rifle shots and, and, you know, some stuff works and some stuff doesn't work. And, you have to figure out what doesn't work quickly and discard that. And, um, you know, incentivizing referrals is something that has worked for us. And it might not work in every market. It might not work for every business owner, but it has worked for us. And I, I don't know that I can think of an example off the top of my head, but there's other stuff that I've heard from people either either in your podcast, Lawrence, or just, you know, from, from reading it, you know, at large um, that we've tried that has not worked for us. Um, and you know, so you just have to find, you just have to keep iterating, trying stuff, find what works and, and, and don't spend a lot of money on the stuff that doesn't work. Cause yeah. <laughs> you can waste a lot of money in business for sure. Yeah. And there's so much complexity too, right. In this game, I feel like, but like there are certain things where it's like, look, if we know so-and-so has done it, like, it's, like, you know, you mentioned Luke there. And for those that don't know, Luke Carlson is CEO of Discover Strength and, Normally, they're quite a good data point because if they've tried something, it's been tried over multiple locations for a long period of time across thousands of clients. Um, but then I sometimes think there are other things which there's so much, I don't know whether I'm right about this, but there's so much variability in, and complexity and, and, and things you can't predict where you try something in your particular location, particular country or whatever, it might work better to your point, right? So it's it, it's trying to discern between what's worth testing and go, okay, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. Let's just do what those guys did because they got great results versus trying something that maybe didn't drive great results, but might for you. Right. Yeah, no, I, I think Absolutely. that's totally, I totally think that's true. And, and again, even in our own right here in the Bay area, we do have several other, um, you know, hit practitioners and the, the, they're, they're on the spectrum of, of, of how they're delivering, right? Like we're, we're doing our own thing. I do think that our version of, you know, hit training, if you want to call it hit influence is, is pretty unique, but I mean, we have other guys that are doing the pure, you know, no mirrors, no music, no, nothing got the tie. Everything's quiet. One person, you know, uh, it's like a temple, you know, and we have other guys that are sort of a little bit in the middle. Right. And then I, I definitely think we're on one side, um, again, because we're, uh, we, we don't get hung up on, on the, the, you know, being purists specifically, mm -hmm. As much as you know, can we do? Because uh, again, you have people. You have to make people happy. We have a new. We have a client right now who is with us. Uh, she was doing the classic stuff. Uh, she took a break. Uh, we 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 implemented something recently with all of our clients where we do these monthly check ins, you know, and make sure you know how are they doing. Uh, talk about goals and reassess and make sure you know get feedback. And uh, this woman had had been with us for a while. She had gone away. Yeah, for like um, a year and, she, and yeah, then she, she got COVID and she, so she took a break. And, and, and a lot of things were going on in her life, but I mean, she revealed in these check-ins, you know, that she wasn't really enjoying, you know, some of the way we were applying the uh, stimulus, you know, with the, 
with the machines and different things. And, and, um, I was really, and I said, you know, you know, come back and, um, let's like, let's rebuild it in, in, in a way that you're going to enjoy. And I said, give me a chance to do that. And t- to her credit, she did. And, um, and she, she came back and, and, and she wasn't, she's like, I'm going to come and I'm going to see, and then I'll make up my mind. And I was like, okay. And then I created a whole different type of program with no machines at all. Um, and, uh, she signed back up for twice a week and, and is like excited now coming back every time she's like super happy. And uh, what was the before and after? Like, what did she not like? And what does she like? You mentioned body weight know, or non machines. Yeah, I think, you know, some people, and this is, you know, we're, we're actually talking about doing an entire episode on this, but, you know, as some people I'm sure in the, in the hit niche may or may not want to like admit or, or recognize, you know, certain people just don't like that open ended idea of like, well, how many should I do? Just keep going until you can't do it anymore. You know what I mean? People don't like that. Not every, it doesn't work for everyone, right? Um, they need a specific goal or a specific number. Just, there's lots of different, and there's many, many people along that spectrum of, of what, you know, ultimate goal works for them. Uh, some of them are okay to just dig in and grind away. Right. But not everybody. And she was, she just wasn't enjoying that. And um, be, because I've been doing this for so long, I've, I've many ways of applying it, which still get the job done um, where I can make it seem like that's not what we're doing. Right. I, I, we're not just going endlessly, um, mm-hmm. and, and then the, again, she, apparently for whatever reason, she wasn't really, she was, and this happens a lot. I find people connect the concept of this sort of one set to failure grinding away to the machines because they've become so married over the years. Cause we've had other people come in and go, Oh, I've done this before. Like I've done the machines that one set thing. I, I, I don't really like it. Right. Um, and I'm like, well, we can do it lots of ways. You know, right? And some of them listen, and some of them don't. They're like, "Nope, I've seen it, I've done it, I understand what you do. I don't like it. I'm going." Right? <laughs> well, she she was like, "I'm willing to let you try again." Right? So I. It's funny. Over in Ireland, everyone's like, "I have no idea what this is. I've never seen anything like this in my life." <laughs> yeah. So I've I've reimagined the the entire process for her, and we have we have our studio is split in half. One half has all the machines on one side, all the nitro, it's just all machines on one side. And on the other side, we have the dumbbells, the bands, the barbells, the TRX, um, most of the other sort of non-machine stuff. And so I've just, I'm keeping her on that side of the building, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, not, we're, I'm not even going in the machine room. And, and now I'm having her doing, you know, more body weight stuff, you know, push-ups, uh, recline pulls, you know, uh, dumbbell stuff. It's still safe, it's still mm. efficient, it's still controlled. But it just to her feels like it's you know it's just working for her, right? And yeah, moving body through space, different type yeah. of experience, right? Yeah. Like and, 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 and so now she's like she's happy, right? This is an older woman too. She's probably in her seventies. Um, she's like super excited, and she keeps telling me at the end of the session, "I really like this," you know. I love it, I and I, I'm like, "Great, well, let's keep doing it." <laughs> you yeah. know, that's why we're here. We want you to keep doing it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, Anything else to say? Is it is it worth is is it fair to say? Actually, let me let me rephrase. So, out of all those ways you guys have been able to generate clients, is that like, what percentage of those would be referrals? Do you think? Would yeah, you say? whether it's networking referrals or, or current client referrals, it's, it's definitely thirty percent or above. If it, excluding networking referrals, because I would I would probably take that as being like a networking um, lead. So, excluding that, which is what twenty percent. Yeah, yeah, I would say probably probably 15, 20%. That's we we've gotten a lot of clients through through current client referrals for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, what about things like, you know, just website inquiries? You know, you've got the website up, it looks great. You've got, you know, Google reviews. Are you getting any much in the way of web inquiries at this point? Or is it still a bit too early for that in terms of like Google ranking you and things like that? Yeah, we get some. Um, we have people, you know, because you're able to book directly through our our uh, website. Uh, we do see, you know, baseline tests populate on our on our schedule sort of spontaneously. So people mm-hmm. people do take advantage of that for and um, we disabled that feature because um, for a while we you know we sort of thought you know we want to be controlling you know everything that's going on with our schedule um, and we. Uh, but yeah, we made the decision to enable that again. And, uh, so yeah, people do roll in occasionally, probably, probably one or two a month, um, roll in from there. And, um, Good yeah, sauce. so it's, 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's not bad at all. As far as the, I mean, I think we've been we're constantly experimenting with everything uh, behind the scenes, you know. So I mean, we've been we've been looking at the you know Yelp stuff, Google stuff, uh, and we've been looking at the um, you know Facebook stuff, marketing, you know, different types of things. Obviously, um, you since you're not on social media, you don't know this, but we've re- we've recently um, really like upped our game on Instagram, and it's had a, a immediately noticeable uh, impact. You know, we, we're like pumping out uh, videos every single day. Now uh, we put training videos out, getting tons of good feedback from it. We're getting tons of uh, views, picking up followers, all that kind of stuff. Um, we've made it a conscious choice to put out content every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, we also put up, you know, we, as you know, we're putting out our own podcast every other week. I, I try to yeah. um, put, put up at least one article a week or every other week on the blog as well. I personally don't feel like we get a ton of traffic through the website. Um, but we're definitely getting some people through Facebook stuff now. And, um, and as Jesse said, we definitely get people that, that do kind of self, um, create appointments, which is great. Um, you know, they'll, they'll sign up like, all right, you know, and we'll say, Hey, who's this person? You know, some some guy just appeared, right. He's, he's, you know, he'll like see it. Um, and the, what we found as far as Google versus Yelp, I don't know if do they have Yelp over there in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, right. So, hey, worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. So, Yelp has been useless as far as we're concerned. Uh, so, uh, this is what I say to Yelp. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so we, we actually just don't even, we, we ask people to give Google reviews only. Like when we ask, if we yeah. say, hey, can you give us a review? We just say, go straight to Google, give us a review. Because it, don't- Yelp, Yelp hides reviews from people who don't use their platform super consistently. So we have, when you look at our, our Yelp business profile, we, you know, it says, you know, five stars on like, I don't know, like six reviews or something like that, but 20 people have reviewed us, you know, and, and it, and it makes it sound shady. It's like, you know, we, there are there are 13 reviews that are not recommended you know like like people are doing some of those like not up to you know not up to code or whatever but it's, it's also just such happy an, clients who have reviewed us such an effort to get a review in the first place right that you yeah, uh, exactly. you don't want you don't want to say hey mr customer could you leave me a review on this site this site this site and this site <laughs> like copy exactly. and paste like google review is the that's the that's the gold standard right you know yeah, you've so- done the right idea you've put it on your homepage you know, if you end up using something like bark.com for generating leads or other services, they'll scrape that and they'll add your reviews to their service. So yeah. you've probably um, accounted for most, you know, most review needs by doing that, I think. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and one of the things we do as far as incentivizing that too, you know, I, I, um, we, we tell people, hey, we have all these TNT t-shirts, you know, hanging up. I like some swag in the sh- and people okay. go, oh, look, TNT t-shirts. And they go, and we go, oh, you, you want a t-shirt? Give us a five-star uh, Google review. Bam. And you know, nice. we give you, sh- so people then we, you know, we're, we get more shirts c- flowing around and, you know, uh, people, people are excited. Oh yeah. I'll, I want a shirt. Right. <laughs> and then next thing you know, there's another review. So uh, that's yeah, a it's great incentive. I love that. Yeah. Great. Uh, I will say, yeah, I, can't, I don't remember where that idea came from. But I'll say about the about the social media stuff. You know, we've we've been dabbling in some uh, Facebook paid Facebook advertising um, because I, I think Facebook makes a lot of sense as a as a platform to advertise on. It's generally, you know, baby boomer, uh, yeah, baby good boomers fit for are your target popular. market, right? Which over yeah. fifty, yeah, okay, yep. Um, <laughs> and I just from posting there in the past, we get a lot of engagement there. So as we've been posting, you know, daily videos on Facebook and Instagram and running paid ads. Um, I wouldn't say that that we're like driving like new clients and revenue from just from you know Instagram and Facebook videos. But what happens is that we've heard is people see an ad and then they dig a little bit deeper about us and they'll see some videos on our Facebook page or our Instagram and and then they want to talk with us about that stuff. So there's kind of a you know a, a residual effect. Like a directional, there. yeah, yeah. So yes. then then you might attribute that lead as like a, they they googled you or something when really they might have had three or four touch points prior to that from all of your content, right? Which Could is have, difficult yes. to track. Um, at least I don't know how you. I mean, we had Josh Jarrett from Quantify Fitness, who's like, you know, 
previous life was a chief marketing officer for a huge insurance company. So he's like a marketing wizard. And I, I believe he he also said it's really difficult to find out like how to track, you know, where some of these people first hear about you because frankly they don't remember um unless you've got all the online tracking going on, you know. Right. And difficult. obviously that's something that we we uh try to make a point, right? Anytime someone walks in the door, calls does anything right? That's the first question we ask. How'd you hear about yeah. this, right? Yeah. Um, because we're but even then, that could things. be directional, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, they might not even know the first touch point. But I don't. I still do that too. I still think that's valuable. By the way, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, it doesn't hurt, right? Um, because because yeah. again, you get that quick feedback. Oh, I I found you on Facebook. A lot of people literally will tell us, you know, I just did like a map, like Google Map, right? Like gyms near me. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, like yeah. great. We added that into our SEO. So when you when you Google us, uh, yeah, it says you know TNT Strength, per, you know uh, Fitness Personal Trainers Oakland or something like that because it's all the you know all the top keywords. Yeah, that- when I when I, when I blog post now every when I tag every, every single post I tag anything I tag I always put gym near me as one of the tags. Yeah. That's like the top searched phrase in our in our area. Okay. We we're yeah, yeah. We we're joking that if we if we ever open another another like studio we'll just call it gym near me. <laughs> <laughs> People will find us kinda, easily. Kinda, yeah, kind of yeah. like dodgeball right be like average joe's gym. <laughs> gym near me. I wanted that's to where I, I wanted that's to where say, I go. The the funny thing is, I would say that the the number one most effective thing that has helped us bring in new clients, which is super frustrating, is this tiny little newspaper, print newspaper that goes out in our neighborhood. It's so funny. We got featured in this thing for free when we first opened up, and and we got a handful of clients like in the in the like first couple days, and then and, it, and it, it extended out too. I mean, people. People came in right when the, you know, because it gets dropped at everybody's doorstep, you know, um, in the in the Rockridge, Oakland area. And um, and so we got a bunch of people and then, you know, and they kept trickling in. And we've been they did another feat. They did like a full page feature on us, um, which we framed and put in our in our entryway. And the same thing happened again. And we've been in their ear about doing paid advertising in their in their newspaper. And and they're it's just a small thing. And they're just full, which I don't understand. They won't take our money. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah, it's so it's so interesting. But so it has worked really well for us to bring in new people. Can you offer more? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've thought about that. We were like, that. we will double or triple whatever your ad. Adver- <laughs> but yeah, I mean, some of these, it's like you know, this is <laughs> whatever it is. I double it. Yeah. <laughs> are there are there like similar publications that might there reach are. the same and target market who you could yeah, yeah go for? There, yeah, there are. We've, we've tried. We've tried some of those things. You know, we've yeah. tried a little. We've, we've done some stuff. Yeah, we've done yeah. all kinds and of things. And they've been successful too. Um, there, there's not one thing that's like, okay, yeah, we, you know, we just turned the faucet on and it's just running now, you know, it's like we've, when we've done print ads, you know, it's been, it's been hit and miss. So again, you know, we're just, we're continuing to fire rifle shots and and see, mm. see what works. Just going back to a point we were talking about earlier, this is, this might interest you. I can't, I won't name the business, but there's a fast growing high intensity training franchise, um, uh, in Europe who, I remember the owner told me or CEO told me that there was a, so, so just going back to our point about, you know, certain marketing tactics work for certain types of business in different locations. They found in one particular location, they would do one bit of um, PR or, um, you know, they have one advert in a local publication and it would just kill it. Like that's all they needed to do. And they just were at capacity for clients. Yet when they tried to roll that same tactic out at the other location, so being a franchise, obviously you're trying to replicate um, the, the, yeah. the, the system, no success or nowhere near as much success as that original location that did that. And it's like, and, and they would have probably knowing who they are and how, the type of level of attention to detail they would have had, you know, they would have executed well and yet it just didn't work for whatever reason, which I think is fascinating, right? It's again, one of those, like, why didn't that work? Who yeah. knows? You know? Really demoralizing. <laughs> yeah. Very demoralizing. Yeah. And it's, it just goes back to my point about there's a lot of uh, complexity in, 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 in sort of market dynamics, right? Yeah, in terms absolutely. Of, I think, and you know, the rifle coming- shotting is the way. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Coming back to uh, you know the dynamic between uh, Liam and myself, you know Liam turned sixty this month. No you know, I'm about to turn thirty five next month. Um, there are there are 
moments in our professional relationship that are frustrating because we have differences of opinion. But I will say that when things don't work out the way that we would have hoped, that is the best time to have a business partner. And, you know, both inside and outside the the hit community, you know, I've gotten a lot of different opinions on, you know, whether you should go into business with, you know, have a, have a 50, 50 business partner, which we have a third partner by the way, but he's silent. Um, but uh, just in the, in the dark moments, it, it's so great to have somebody there and it's, it's especially great. Uh, kudos to, to Liam. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's an absolute privilege to have somebody who has as much experience and wisdom as Liam does, because, yeah, sometimes we do stuff and we fall flat on our faces and it sucks. Um, and it's really nice to have somebody there. And, and on the flip side too, when we do something that works really well, it's really great to be able to share that, you know, with somebody. Yeah, so totally agree. Yeah. 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 Welcome to entrepreneurship, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, it's like when people, I mean, we just had a happy hour call inside the membership and, and, you know, a couple of people in there still start up really struggling and it's, it's like, look, you can have access to all of the content and all of the solutions and courses out there from all these great, you know, um, websites and fitness business consultants. But at the end of the day, entrepreneurship is a full contact sport. And like, oh, yeah. it's it's really hard and you'll get knocked flat on your face all the time, especially in the beginning. And, only, and even when you start having more success, the problems only get bigger, right? So it's like this is just a path that's that's full of challenge and and you've you've got to be a resilient person or build up that resilience in order, in order to handle that you know it's not always going to be like oh you figure everything out and it's just smooth sailing it's always going to be challenges down the line yeah you yeah. have to nip that just get idea better at dealing with them yeah, yeah if you if you think oh you know the the stars are just going to align and it's going to be easy yeah mm -hmm. you you really have to you really have to cut that line of thinking out and you have to expect things to be challenging and you have to anticipate that and look forward to it uh, if you don't, you're going to be really disappointed. And if you, if you can look forward to this, right. It's like, uh, I know we all could probably quote, uh, Luke Carlson, you know, until the cows come home, but you know, there was a, there was a, I'm really grateful to him because, you know, we, one of, one of the, and this is why we were before, before we started recording Lawrence, I, I brought up the book profit first, um, Mike Michalowicz, the author of Profit First, he references the e-myth in, in that book. And, you know, the e-myth, if you haven't read it, is all about, uh, you know, systematizing your business. And, um, and, you know, if you're the business owner, you've got to get out of the day-to-day -day operations. And so the system can run itself, you know, which I agree with, you know, to some extent. Mike Michalowicz in Profit First talks about how it's not just like flipping a switch that the owner, you know, just gets out of the day-to-day -day operations. He he calls it a throttle, right? So, and that was like, that was a, real, a ch big challenge that I had personally in our business as we, because we got to a point where we were, you know, we were busy enough that we needed to hire another employee. We needed to hire a trainer. And, um, and at that point, like once he was trained up, we asked some of our clients to, to train with him and we were, we were getting some resistance. And so I reached out to Luke and, you know, ask, you know, what can I, what can I, I do here? Um, how can I approach this differently, more intelligently? And, um, and so that was, that was, uh, really great he get, he gave some some really great feedback um but yeah i think it's i think it's in oh, i think that's a really what common kind of, what kind of feedback jess you can't leave us hanging there you gotta tell us what <laughs> what was the what was the solution um well he uh he pointed out that you know clients need to feel 100 percent confident that they're going to have an equivalent or or superior experience training with someone else than they have with you like that's that's number one um you so and they they have to understand that your job as a business owner is different than your job as a trainer right there, we have a lot of responsibilities outside of just training clients which a lot of clients don't realize because they think of you as the trainer right um especially you know uh, we have people now that i mean i've been in the industry for for five years and i've been training a couple of people a couple of our clients that long they've been with me since the very beginning and so they think of me as trainer Jesse. And I, so I have to tell people explicitly, look, yeah, like I'm training you, but I'm a business owner now. You know, I have, I have a lot of stuff going on. Um, but, and you have to be able to express that in a, in a tactful way. Um, and the kind of the, the, what we try to get across to, especially our new clients, but also our, our older existing clients is that, 
um, you know, we are, we are an interchangeable team and there are going to be times at the very least where Jesse is sick or Jesse is traveling or, or whatever, our family emergency or something like that happens and I'm not available. So at least at the very least in those scenarios, you know, we have to have the flexibility for, for people to train with somebody else. And so, and it's, it is tougher to sort of get people to, to like get off of that idea if they've been training with exclusively you forever. Um, it's much easier to program, you know, new clients to understand, you know, I, I'm, I train with Liam this day. I train with Jesse this day. I train with Taylor, you know, Taylor this day and Liam went on vacation. So, uh, you know, I'm going to train with Jesse for the next two or three weeks or whatever it is, you know, yeah, um, in the beginning we try, I mean, when it was just the two of us, uh, we, we have an employee now, um, as we mentioned, but when it was just the two of us, we tried to do that on purpose. So anytime we had twice a week clients, we tried to make it so that they saw him once and they saw me once. Um, as Jesse mentioned, and as we all know, people do get attached themselves to certain people, or perhaps some of, sometimes our clients came from previous relationships where they had exclusively trained with one or the other of us, and, and they continue to do so. Um, but most of them, I would say, I think it's fair to say that most of them are open and recognize that the workout's going to be just as good um, if it's with another trainer. Um, some people come specifically looking for for me, for instance, because I have this reputation or whatever, and like they found me somehow, and they they've they've already attached themselves to me, and they haven't even begun yet. You know, um, like he's the guy. He's and 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 uh, so I'll take those guys and and and. But recently, I had to be out, and I just I let them know, hey, Taylor's going to do it, or Jesse's going to do it. It's going to be just as good, or maybe it's going to be even better. You know, I I yeah. actually joke jokingly told them it's going to be better. You're not going to want to come back and see me anymore. <laughs> Um, that's what I told them when yeah, I said I would I be that. out. And, and, and that way, when I came check back, of course, I go, how was it? You know, and they're like, oh, my God, it was great. You know, uh, yeah. And then, then, they, yeah. then they already know it doesn't really matter. It's a lot easier with your new clients, right, who don't. For sure. Uh, yep. who don't haven't trained with you for years prior. Uh, yep. But I think your first point, Jesse, you know, about making sure that you're communicating that everyone's operating to a standard and, you know, and, and then obviously making sure that everyone does, right? <laughs> Make sure that all the yeah. trainers do deliver great value. I mean, it's it's it hits the ego a little bit, but it's otherwise music to my ears when I hear a client say, oh yeah, I prefer to work out with the, this trainer than you, Lawrence, you know? And um, that's happened a couple of times actually. And at first yeah. it was like painful. And then I thought, hang on, Lawrence, this is what you want. This is the <laughs> yeah. outcome you're after. Like, no, I, I, awesome. I mean, I, I would say that it's, I, I think, I think that some of them are getting pretty attached to Taylor, for instance, you know, he's our newest guy. He's very new across the board with his experience as a trainer. I mean, we, yeah. we basically have tried to create him in our own image, you know? And, um, I, I feel like some of his people are already very attached to him, you know, like, uh, and, and I, and I, I do see that as a good thing. Um, I mean, we want people to know that we are interchangeable, but I, I'm not unhappy to find that they um, feel connected to him. Um, we, you know, obviously that's better than not. Um, but yeah, I understand, yeah, go ahead. I understand what you say about the ego thing too, though. I mean, you know, I remember that from other, you know, like playing sports, right. You know, I used to play sports and, you know, you, you, you think like, like I played soccer, you know, football. Um, and, you know, I was a starting player on a big team, but, but, you know, you, you got to remember like, you know what, they don't need me out there. You know, like the, sometimes you need to sit down, right. There's 20 guys on the team. Where yeah, you think I have to be role. on the field for the, yeah. Like yeah. I'm one of 11 guys, like sit down, take a break. Yeah. Somebody else can do it. They don't need, you know, get your ego out of it. You don't have to be there, you know, and so, fall down and hurt yourself because you're tired. You know? yeah. yeah, Guys, I, I've like scratched the surface on my questions here. And, <laughs> but, and I feel like I could talk to you all day and maybe we'll have to do a part two on this topic. Um, but just conscious of your time. And uh, so I think we'll probably start to wrap it up um yeah i, I probably have a ahead. client who's going to show up like in, within five in the next five minutes got it okay good time and good time um guys what's the best way for the listeners to find out more about your business so you can visit our website uh tntstrength.com that's uh that's a great place to go liam's prolific in our uh blog there you can there's a, a link to our podcast which is available on all the major platforms um, or you can yeah. email us contact at tntstrength.com or truth about trends on Instagram, Facebook. Those are the Instagram's the place to go nowadays. Cause we're, we are posting daily, uh, 
day, but I mean, it's very simple what we do. You know, we, we film our workouts so you can see me and Liam and Taylor going through our workouts. And then we, and then we sort of feature, uh, an exercise and, um, and, you know, just give a, give some workout tips about it. And so we've been getting a lot of good, good feedback and that's a good place to check us out. If you want to see what we do. Yeah. We're also on Twitter. Um, we're, we have all of our pricing is on our website. It's totally transparent. Um, you know, everything's there. Like, you know, it's funny how people will ask and then I'll go, it's there right there. And then they still don't get it. Like they come and still have those same questions. I'm like, weren't you on the website? Like it's literally right there. There's nothing hidden. About it's pretty it. clear. Yeah. 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 And I love, I love your pricing, by the way. I think it's nice and nice and premium level, you know? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We just, yeah, we just increased it actually. That was, we, we just put a couple, a couple, uh, changes in place in our business. Another one, which we didn't talk about, which I'd love to is uh, oh, switching yeah. from monthly billing to weekly billing. And, and we think that's going to have a major impact in our business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, if you guys are up for it, uh, happy to schedule a part two. I'd love to get into all that stuff. Yeah, um, Cause we really just focused on marketing for the most part, which is great. Yeah. We can um, hang out all day, Lawrence. Yeah. And no, I likewise um, really appreciate you both making the time. Great to see you. And I'm really pleased that you're doing so well. Um, And for everyone listening to find the blog post for this episode, please go to highintensitybusiness.com, search for episode 377. And until next time, thank you very much for listening. This episode is brought to you by Strength Portal. You need a single software platform that enables your trainers to deliver consistent high quality workouts, track client progress and scale your business. The problem is you're still using pen and paper or basic spreadsheets to run your business, which leads to poor client experiences, inaccurate tracking and prevents you from growing your business, making you feel frustrated. Strength Portal understand your challenge and have worked closely with the hit industry to create a software platform to manage and scale your niche business. You can integrate with MindBody, manage a standardized exercise and workout library for your team, track workouts effectively and produce client reports at the click of a button. Strength Portal is used by multiple businesses in the high intensity strength training community, namely Discover Strength, Smart Strength Austin, Medex Precision Fitness, and more. Starting with Strength Portal is super simple. Number one, sign up for the best package for your business. Number two, let Strength Portal take the load off and help onboard your business onto the platform. And number three, start delivering consistent workout experiences and scale your business to the next level. To help support the podcast, please go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business and sign up now so you can stop feeling frustrated about your business and start to scale your business to its true potential. Go to strengthportal.com forward slash high intensity business. Let's go. Let's go.